My name is Barb Sackel. Today's video is made possible by QuiltWoman.com. In this video today, I will be showing you the courthouse step block. This is the fourth block in my beginning quilting series. Here's the quilt we're working on, one block at a time, and down here is the courthouse step. The nice thing about this block is not only will you learn how to do this block today, but this block also emulates putting together the borders on a regular quilt. We're going to learn a new song today. And the song goes like this. Top, bottom, side, side. Top, bottom, side, side. And once again, top, bottom, side, side. Once you learn that song and it makes sense to you, this is how you not only will do today's block, but this is how you will always put your borders on. Top, bottom, side, side. So this block today has two purposes. Now, you have your pattern in front of you. You've cut out your strips and your three and a half inch background square for your center. So we are getting ready to go ahead and put our block together. Sometimes when people do this block or they do log cabin blocks, they will give you a specific size to attach as you go around the centerpiece. In this technique, I'm not doing that. We are going to have a piece larger than what you need so that we can square down and make our block consistently precise to the size that we need it. So let's go ahead and I'll show you what that means. We're going to take our center background and our red strip as shown in the instructions right here. And we're going to put them right sides together with a red overhanging the background just a bit. Then we're going to sew those together and you can start sewing it anywhere as long as you cover the, you know, the background piece. Let's sew this together. And then you're going to cut off the bottom tail, I don't know, anywhere you want. Again, you're going to do the other side. This is where the top bottom, which doesn't mean top and bottom here, but on the quilt you'll, you'll see it. You would be doing the top and bottom first. So we're going to do the other side, overhang both edges, so that. and nip off the bottom and your piece looks like this. Now this in this instance you are going to press to the dark. Oh, we can't always do that but here here we can follow that rule quite nicely. Well wouldn't you know it I already have a piece here pressed. So now that this is pressed what we're going to do is we're going to square this up. We've got our ruler our rotary cutter and our mat sitting next to us because, well, it's just a little convenient to, to have them sitting next to us because we're going to square up every time we add a, another row. So let's square up. Okay, so here we have our first sewing done and it's pressed and we're ready to cut. What we're going to do is line up our ruler right across the top of that background piece. Now in the instructions I tell you it should be three and a half by six and a half and it does fit in those parameters nicely. So once I line up the top here it's going to show me right where I'm going to cut off those two extra pieces. Then I'm going to turn this around and again it's going to fit into that three and a half by six and a half very nicely and you're going to nip off the other side and now your block is true to size so we can continue adding and we know we're right on target with the size. So let's add our next color. Okay here's our block all squared up and ready for the next color. The next color is our purple. So again we're just going to lay our strip right on the side of it. Overhang the edge, don't forget. We're going to start to sew. Notice that I'm not pinning. Um, at this point, I, I just don't feel it's necessary to pin. If you want to pin to hold your fabric together until you're comfortable not pinning, um, go ahead. And you should always do what you're co most comfortable with. But at this stage, I don't pin these pieces. Cut off 
cut off excess. Turn your block around. And let's do the other side. Don't forget with this block we are using a scant quarter inch. Um, and of course that's my iron, don't worry about it. Use your scant quarter inch and if you're not familiar with that, check out my video, The Perfect Seam Allowance uh, with one quarter inch. Let's continue sewing this. And cut off the excess. And now we need to square this piece up. Let's do it. Here's our unit on our cutting mat ready to be cut. I'm going to lay my ruler on top and it's going to go across the straight edge of the red. In my instructions it says I need a six and a half by six and a half inch block. So I can see that the sides are that wide. Now I just have to square up the top and the bottom. So I lay my ruler on that for flush. Cut off the little pieces of purple. Turn my block around. Yeah, I skimmed a little red there and that's normal. Turn my block around, set it in the six and a half by six and a half, and give your second cut. There we go, ready to add the next color. Okay, our unit is ready. And now you can see when we do this block, we go top, bottom, side, side, and we're gonna go back to the top and the bottom. So we just repeat this for however big you want your courthouse steps to be. This block, of course, will end up at 12 and a half. Um, size, but you can just continue this till you have a full size quilt if you want to. So we did top, bottom, side, side. We're going back to the top. Overhang our yellow. And off we go. The pressing of this entire block is keeps getting pushed to the outside. So the pressing stays consistent in this and I'll just fold that back and press it. So I'll meet you up at the squaring up station. Here we are, ready to square it up. We're going to put our ruler on there. Did we check the size? Let's see. The size says six and a half by nine and a half. So the nine and a half across, yep, that's where we are, six and a half deep. Line this up with the top of the purple. Off you go. Turn it around. Now it should fit into the six and a half by nine and a half. Perfect. It does. And off you go. We only have one more color. To, no, two more colors before we finish up. So I'm going to go ahead, do the green and do the red, and I'll show you the finished block. Okay, we left off. In the center here with the purple, red, did the yellow, and then I added the green, the red, and the yellow. I had actually three more sides when I was thinking at the time I only had two, but three more sides brought this block up to 12 and a half inch square. And using our 12 and a half inch square ruler, we set it on time and on top of this, and we see we're right on target. This completes the block, the courthouse step block, and if you do a log cabin block, this is done in the same manner except for it's one piece at a time versus the top, bottom, side, side. Well, I've done a couple quilts for you to show you other versions of the courthouse step. This is my pattern called Cheese and Crackers. And you can see this is an elongated courthouse step. So the center piece can be any size. And then here I added the top, bottom, and the side. And then I went back to the top, bottom, side, side, and so on. On this bigger quilt, the merry-go-round, I really changed it up by just changing the colors. So although I did these two at the same time in the same manner as you know we did the red on this, I just used different colors. And I kept changing the colors up. And then when I went up here, I changed more colors. And so you get a much uh, quilt, much more filled with color. So these two patterns are available at quiltwoman.com and they're great to practice your squaring up skills.
for the courthouse step. Thank you for joining me today. Be sure to check out the rest of my videos and don't forget about the big one coming up. Let's square up. We'll see you again soon.